I see you looking at me, looking at you. Hold up, where you going? What you doing? Who you staying? What you need? What you want? I said, without you by my side, my side, my side. Without you by my side, one time, one time, from side to side, without you by my side.
everybody, welcome back. It's me and Anti once again on the desk, but this is not Whoa. a Conqueror match. This is not a Conqueror match. We've got Immortal League Week 7, the one of the last two regular season weeks. we got one more to go next week before we can get on into those ever-loved playoffs that we cannot wait for. And we've got an another team returning to the broadcast, Art of War Esports, this time not in a cross group. Mm -hmm. They're going to be fighting the number four speed te Tempest Gaming as they're looking to duke it on out for that number three spot going into playoffs. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I'm really interested to see just how this does pan out. We're so close to playoff cilantro. And now these two teams trying to make a statement right before the playoffs does start. I'm not 100% certain how close either of these teams are to the playoff contention, right? Because, you know, it does get pretty difficult once you get later into that season, right? Oh. I mean, some of the cross map matches, cross group matches don't necessarily count, but it does show off some of these teams' weaknesses, right? Um, when we saw the Sunga Sense versus Art of War, a lot of it was just you know, not playing to their win conditions, not really understanding what is it that we can play towards, you know, maybe a little bit of too heavy on the cooking, but also not being ready for some of the pocket picks on other teams. You know, Art of War tends to be a very standard team that doesn't really deviate too much from the meta. And, you know, against teams that they're weaker than, they will lose. Against teams that they're stronger than, they will win. There's very little variance for this team here. So now going up against CPG, it's going to be really interesting to see just what these teams do bring out now that we're getting into the thick of things. Kindred immediately taken off the table. Yeah, and coming, uh, we're, we're talking about the team of TPG. Uh, they need a 2-0 here. Uh, realistically, if they want to take that third seed spot, they need to 2-0 Art of War. Mm -hmm. Art of War currently sitting at a 4-4 map record with a 2-2 scoreline, and TPG will be sit are at a 1-3 scoreline with a 3-6 map record. So they get the 2-0 here. They're going to go even in the overall game records, but in map terms, they'll go to 5-6, and six, whereas... Art of War will drop to four and six. That should be enough to boop them on up into that number three spot. So they're going to be fighting for every single map this time around. And we're going to see if they can come out with the blue side advantage here. War is going to be banned away. We got the double teamo mm -hmm. ban, I believe. It's just because Art of War was a little bit late to their the, the lobby. They were having some jungler player issues. So they lost out on a couple bans. I didn't mm -hmm. even realize you could ban Teemo twice, but we got two sure you Teemo ban away twice. I mean, haven't um, you ever played Arena? <laughs> I guess. All right, but either way, Teemo aside, Ash going to get picked up immediately here for TPG. Very, very strong champion on the patch in competitive. I mean, regardless of whether or not you put a bunch of gold into that Ash, that way she can put out a lot of DPS, or if you just play Ash on weak side and then just let her use those arrows for those cross map plays, it's always gonna be a good champion. Meanwhile, on the other side, Geico's Ezreal immediately gonna be picked up here. I'd be very, very surprised to see this in that mid lane, but the Leona might have been nerfed, but it does not matter. Champion is still busted good to be roaming around ash brom very very good combo in that bot lane but with a champion like ezreal having the ability to play from range play it safe means that leona is still not quite locked into that bot lane yeah and tpg locking in the camille uh, going for that blind top side pickup is going to be whoa nice oh, Renek we saw this last night unironically and it didn't go very well for the renekton uh whatsoever uh, maybe art of war uh, maybe they're going to be able to break the code and beat out this Camille into the top side. I think if the Renekton can just go even, it'll be fine for him, but he definitely does not want to give that advantage to the Camille. I mean, yes, you don't want to give the advantage over, but Renekton as a counterpick into a Camille is throwing down the gauntlet, right? Havoc is saying, I am the better top laner. I'm just uh -oh. going to just slap Ham all across the table, right? Just get that early lead. Make sure that the Renekton can push that gold lead and just take down all of those towers. So what we're going to be seeing here is a lot more focus towards the top half of the map. You know, Ezreal, incredible on the weak side. We're not going to be seeing oh, a weak side. I'd be very, very surprised. Shivana just got nerfed, but 
you know, what they did do is they adjusted towards that AD Shivana, right? Giving her a little bit of extra love here. So I do think we're going to be seeing some of that AD Shiv in the jungle, but that also means we're not going to be seeing too much power in the early game, right? Brand will absolutely be able to do a lot more work in the early game in comparison to Shiv. And also, it would be very surprising to see, you know, the magic damage come out in the same way on AWE. TPG have the very standard AD mid laner, magic damage jungler, AD top laner, right? You know, you have your AD solo lanes. Meanwhile, AWE has a little bit of double physical damage jungle and top lane. So the only magic damage is really coming out in that mid lane, a little bit of it from the Shibana, but not quite gonna have the same kind of damage spread that's harder to really itemize against, right? If Ham does pick up that early plated steel caps, it does have a lot more value than if you had that mixed damage top lane and jungle synergy. Yeah, and the bot side for both these two teams, TPG, uh, if they can force this lane to go even with the Ezreal, Ezreal is going to be matched by Ash. Braum's going to have to get the roam timers with Marquette. Jesus is going to have to try and get to those objectives because, you know, the Leona heavy roaming champion is going to want to be pushed the objectives for those Void Grubs, for those Dragons. And so in the one-on-one, -on -one, as long as Ash can go even and not, they can't really give any sort of advantage to this Ezreal, very strong early game champion. I think that things will be kind of fine for uh, the bot lane going forward. The, the Ezreal, if this goes even, I'm going to be favoring the Ash as we go into the later half of the game uh, because of that utility, because of the, the strength mm -hmm. of her arrows and lockdown with the CC on the Braum. When we get into those team fights, I'm going to be heavily liking this Ash more than an Ezreal that goes even with her. Especially in combination I mean with that CC and Brandle bouncing around. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a ton of damage. You don't, you don't need to be extremely fed on Ash when you have a brand on your team. Yeah, what I will say is what AWE have is a strong death ball composition, while TPG have a good comp to play into that, right? You have a good pick coming in from TPG, and while you can play the death ball composition, if Brand gets picked off early, it could mean tough business for the side of AWE. In the meantime, it is going to be that Shivana with the fleet footwork coming on in. So likely still going to be seeing the same kind of builds that we saw in that last patch. You know, it's going to be the Spear of Shojin, the Leandris, the Nabori Flicker Blades. You know, lots of cooldown reduction for the Shiv, lots of mixed damage. So we are going to be getting that mixed damage coming in from the jungle mid lane duo, but we're not quite going to be getting the same kind of play from, you know, the brand and the Yone in terms of that 2v2. For sure. So I'm going to be looking at cause. Not going to be as strong early game as the Shivana will be. If Max can maybe find these sort of heavy uh, wave pushes angles, maybe they can look for these sort of jungle invades and get a lead on the Shivana against the brand. If they go kind of even, I'm going to be favoring the brand a bit because we know how AP junglers are. You full clear, recall, buy faded ashes, and full clear again. So. Once mm -hmm. I'm going to be expecting Brand to kind of try and set this tempo with Brahams. They're going to want to go for those invades off the Yone. Uh, before the Mags is able to get this Lost Chapter online and realistically start getting the heavy wave pushing prior that mages have, Grams should have a little bit of an early advantage. As long as he doesn't take too much trade against this Vex. And invading with a champion like Yone is with uh, with combination with Brand, it's going to be pretty devastating if nostalgia ends up getting caught on out you know on the top side we're just gonna have trades coming back and forth between ham and havoc uh ham not opting for the flash instead is going to be having that ignite and we saw the same exact thing in this matchup last night against the renekton so i'm gonna say what i said then uh, in the early stages i'm gonna be favoring this uh, camille while the ignite is online taking trades with the true damage uh and we, then we get level six the x have to him come down with the burnt with the ignite coming down and true damage is gonna be able to stop up havoc healing but havoc needs to take those engages and go for the better trade-offs with that healing while the ignite is off cooldown on the camille mm -hmm. i mean if havoc does play these trades well you do have things like the Empowered W to make sure that Camille passive does not 
even get close to being a factor in any of these fights. <laughs> Excuse me. And in the bot lane on the other side, we do have Geico playing that classic Ezreal, right? I mean, the man's been playing Ezreal for a long, long time. Very, very comfortable on this champion, but very difficult champion to make work, especially after the nerfs. In the meantime, Mags might be in a little bit of trouble. You got a Jesus and a ball just walking over to the mid lane, trying to make something happen, but not opting to stay for too long. And once again, this is the strength of champions like the Leona, right? You have the ability to just roam, but oh my god, all oh. the way in. Flashes on the boost, it has to bring the flash in. The cleanse as Jesus is going to be pushing forward on the Geico. So we're going to be able to find the stun off. Marquette is eating up the most majority of the Asher. And that's going to be ticking straight on down, though. They're going to find the empowered auto in first blood. He's going to go straight on over to the brand. Meanwhile, Geico is just going to move on up towards this jungle. Nostalgia is coming down on the Shivana. Getting the movement speed off of the W. Maybe looking for some sort of engage. But the Rock Toss is going to be able to come straight on down as Jesus is able to put up the shield just to be able to kite on back out. But merely all sums burned. Over on the side of TPG, J Jesus was just barely able to hold on to the flash. Yeah, and just like that, Leona going to be going down for first blood. We're seeing a lot of that early proactivity coming in from TPG. You saw the Braum get that first roam off and also the first blood coming in at just the right time to get that 2v2 going. In the meantime, this wave gets all the way pushed in. I doubt that they're going to just, you know, tank up the wave in the face of nostalgia here but in the meantime top lane going pretty well for havoc has a hold on the wave there and honestly i would not be too surprised to see ham try to drag kaz over towards that top side to break that freeze try to make something happen here in the meantime we're just getting trade on trade on trade in that mid lane and it has not been great for the vex Marquette caught out in a 2v1 here. Maybe they were able to cancel the back timer or Marquette maybe just trying to freeze up the wave and Jesus and Booster are just trying to be able to keep him from being able to do so and let it crash on in. Marquette is going to take a ton of wave damage here though as the second one's going to crash on into that. But the wave is able to come down in time so he's going to be able to step off of the wave for the time being. Meanwhile, Max is forced to burn out the TP here so Grahams is going to be able to have at least a little bit of a macro advantage in terms of the wave pushing power now that he has the TP back online. Is can recall here doesn't need to proc tp immediately so havoc stacking up these waves looking to crash them straight on in with void grub spawning up was to de de designate that top side wave prio but nostalgia is starting to move on towards the bot side ocean dragon has been spawned up and cause is into the top side so if they do want to go for an early start of this they definitely can do so should be an early read it should be an easy read though out of tpg i mean you got a shivan on the other team of course they're going to want to start stacking dragons early and i want to see kaz start moving towards this bot side knowing that the shivana should be wanting to go for these objectives yeah in the meantime the cast not going to opt to go in just yet as ham still had not quite hit that level six mags on the other hand looking for an in lane. on the spot lane yep marquette is going straight on in gets brand passive stunned up though mags is still lingering around looking for some sort of orty combo i believe the hawk shot will spot out that the vex is there now and that the dragon has been started so at least the void gums trades are going to be able to come down into this top side but grams is able to pick up a ton of uh, is able to get, at least get a plate there in the mid lane as well as a lay pushed in so off of mags roam so a little bit of advantage coming out into the mid lane. So you get a plate on your mid laner. You get a little bit of a gold lead. You get the void grubs uh, as well. So it's an overall pretty worthwhile trade out of TPG. It's not just objective for objective. It goes in mm -hmm. gold favored as well. Yeah, I, it works out well for the side of TPG here. But at the very least, Nostalgia has hit those crucial crucial win conditions, right? It's Shivana level six. It's the first dragon for Shivana. Once you get that dragon stacking going, Shivana is a very, very happy camper here. And now with a little bit of AD under his belt should be able to start wreaking havoc across the map here. So now we're gonna have to look and see just how impactful is the first Shivana gank now that the ultimate is available. I agree going to be going into the dragon form the, the dragons the play the flame flames breath in dragon form has been nerfed down a little bit the damage uh ratios i think that they decreased the total ad and for an increase in the ad ratios over time so it's it's not going to be a devastating gang like oh my gosh you're going to go to the dragon form and one shot me 
because she has a total like a, a t overall base AD increase. So now it's just going to be not as strong level six, but when we get to like level ten, for example, it'll be a lot stronger. So uh, Nostalgia is going to continue to go for the full clears on up. Neither one of these junglers really finding angles to go for a sort of map prio pressure gang. So Nassau just came into the bot side just a couple times, but. So far, these lanes going even is on both sides is realistically not what one of these, not what either of these junglers want. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to make sure that something goes crazy here. And look at that top lane, Kaz and Ham just once again staying very close to one another, trying to make sure that Havoc doesn't really pull out too much of a lead. But look at the CS lead; it's just slowly, slowly building here. The Camille looking to back should mean that Havoc has the oh. opportunity to get on in here. And Pro Comps giving the draft score over to TPG here. Honestly, I don't necessarily disagree. I'm a little bit surprised to see the Shivana pick here, right? So it's not that Shivana's a bad pick by any means. The biggest question is why pick the Shivana over the brand, right? Why do you have so much faith in this pick here? There's no reason to forfeit a very strong meta pick if you don't have something cooking here. And honestly, with, you know, someone who drafts like, you know, AWE, I'm not too sure what exactly it is that we're going to be seeing from Nostalgia. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it was band or anything but i would love to have seen a sejuani combination with the renekton here it could be pretty devastating uh and we don't play it but i don't expect anyone to play it in this league uh but nidalee renekton is also really strong no um, no no stop stop right it there is, it is I'm going it to is lose good. my mind it is good do I think they should pick it? No, I never think they should pick it. But I think are, that there's I'm... a handful of people on the yes. planet who can play Nidalee, and I don't think Nostalgia is necessarily one of them. I I do not disagree. I do not disagree. <laughs> and, and 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 the five of them are all in LCK, uh, <laughs> unironically. Eh, but I'm, there's I'm... there's a few people out there. Nah, maybe. Maybe not. In the meantime, I thought Ronald enchanted crystal arrow solar beam. Holy, she just got hit with the kitchen sink, the cookbook, the sponge, the scrub daddy, the dawn power dish soap. Everything just hit her. Yeah, absolutely everything. And just like that, Jesus and Bottle honestly might just start throwing in <laughs> the support diff in all chat. That's two kills over to the Braum, two deaths over to the Leona here. And once again, three more grubs over to the side of TPG. There is no chance for AWE to contest this in the slightest. And in the meantime, the dragon is still not up here. So you could actually see a full-on contest for the side of TPG once this dragon spawns. AWE need this dragon for themselves here. They cannot be just giving it up. And without Teleport on Havoc, there's no way to really force that 5v5. Yeah, but Ham's not really going to be in the position to be able to TP on in either, because Havoc can just go into Tower with the Dominance and kill it up if he does decide to try and go for it. So, And he has a stun in the back pocket too. Uh, so Ham, maybe wants to go into Tower here, has the Ignite, and the Dominance is going to be proc but maybe he's going to be able to come down in return, but he's not going to be able to get out of the Ignite procs. He's going to go one for one, and with TP into the back pocket on Ham, he loses absolutely nothing. So it's a better trade-off for him in the top side. Yeah, I mean, the wave at the very least is shoved in, and it makes sure that you're not going to be getting a 4v5 in towards the jungle. I don't dislike this from Havoc at all. So right now, going to be able to secure the second dragon. First ultimate of the game from Nostalgia doesn't really seem to be doing much, though. Yeah, Flying Breath goes straight into the, the face of Jesus in the bottle who puts up the shield. So uh, that's what I'm going to be expecting. I'm going to be expecting him to eat uh, Zonia Blades as much as he possibly can. Vex ultimate and flame breaths coming out of nostalgia with this Braum pickup. It's going to be pretty
pretty devastating. Kals is in the area though, maybe looking for some sort of gank potential. The recall is being turned up. Eternal Crystal is going to be able to come down, but Gekko is able to get buffer it with the Arcane Shift. Jesus, the ball of force to flash on out. Kaz is able to miss up the Q, not going to be able to find the stuff, but ends up finding it on the Marquette. Marquette is at least a trade off. So you lose the dragon, you get a kill over into the bot side, into the pocket of the brand. Thank God Jesus in the bottle is not about to go 3 0. Uh, and. <laughs> Now we can start seeing this brand get online as games goes under the tower. Bait sealed into the back pocket. Vex wants to be able to come down and go. Whoa. Yeah. Um. And <laughs> man, that was a crazy all in coming in from Yone. Did not anticipate the ultimate immediately after the fate sealed comes back. I mean, either way, you know, it's one of those moments where you find yourself a little bit too antsy you say all right you know i have lethal i gotta go for it there's nothing that's gonna stop me except the tower right in <laughs> the meantime vex going to be able to pick up that first kill extra two stacks on a dark seal and it's looking much much better for the side of awe here the solo lanes starting to win out the fully completed eclipse on havoc it's got to be feeling good here no hexec ultimatum available actually Complete liar here. Omnis um, coming down. We're getting the two. Comes up with the cast. And the Hoax X that going to comes out too. But he's able to heal up with the rage meter. And he might theoretically be able to 2v1 this, but does not want to stick around to be able to find out. Renekton is putting in the work. This is a complete opposite of what we saw last night in Camille versus Renekton. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely working out in the favor of AWE here. In the meantime, we're going to have to see how the game does develop, right? We're 14 minutes in, plates are finally down, so we're not really going to get nearly as much value out of these boy grubs. But right now, the gold is dead even, right? Essentially, like 100 gold really separates these two teams here. But in the meantime, Nostalgia looking to do something in the bot lane once again. There's so much focus in the bot lane from this Shibana. Mm -hmm on a team where usually you'd expect to see that focus in the top lane to try to make sure the Renekton gets ahead, but Havoc's already done it himself, right? So much of that gold lead is in that top lane. There is no gold lead overall because, you know, the rest of the map kind of going out. around Solar it. Beam, Booster's able to go and get the cleanse on out. Just in the bottom of the shield is facing the wrong way, unfortunately. And the True Shop Rod is going to be able to come down. Kaiko gets stunned on up. And Vex is coming in with the ulti too. The Fates is going to be able to push him back into the tower. And they're at least going to go one for one. Vex goes under the tower too. They're going to make it a three for one. So far, AWE coming in clean with the tower. Dive. Oh no, Kaz able to find at least clean up there. So it's a three for two. And, I mean, overall, still winning out, though, for AWE. It, it, a little bit of buffering from TPG to make mm -hmm. it not so bad. Yeah, unfortunate sidestep into the brand W for Mags there. But, in the end, going to be working out relatively well for the side of AWE. Both the carries go down, so they're not necessarily going to be getting too much more. But the Shivana is slowly becoming more and more of an issue. Now, I do believe it is going to be a build towards that Leandri's Torment and then the Navori Flicker Blades. So it's going to be a Shivana that, as the patch notes have said, has been cooking quite a bit, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a very large amount of mixed damage. You got to be very, very careful against it. And the Shivana always going to be able to get so much more with that dragon. Let's look at this fight again. This solar flare coming in from Marcot immediately cleansed away. Flash away from the ash. Beautiful stuff. But in the end, Jesus not going to be able to pull off any miracles. Just going to go down there. Geico getting stunned up and falling. But a teleport in for a one for one isn't exactly what you want to be seeing. Mag's going to be able to pick up the damage on Boster, but it is going to be nostalgia. But the tiniest sliver of that W tagging the Vex it means it's a full on trade kill. Max, gotta be careful here. What? Ooh. You're telling me that doesn't hit? Well, I can't. Oh, just tickle his toesies. I've seen some Ash arrows in, in my days of, of League of Legends, and that. Of all Astros, I believe, definitely should have hit. But Max is able to land the ulti. Fate Seal is going to be able to help him get on over the wall. So everything's going to be coming straight down to the Jesus. who has to buffer it out with an ultimate of his own. True Shop Raj. Grams is forced to burn out the flash. And it's Kaz getting the brand ultimate. Bounce back and forth. Boaster's coming in off the flank with the dominant stun off on of Havoc. He's going to be able to help find out the kill. But the Hexic ultimate is coming down in return with the Ignite procs. As Ham is able to go at least one for one there within the jungle. 
And it's uh, two, actually one for two as Havoc and Marquette ended up falling, but they're going to go ahead and start up the dragon. Anyway, this will be third for AWE. Not only are they going to be sitting on Soul Point, but guess what? Shavana gets magic. Okay. What? How did, uh, okay. Ga Geico, yeah, is just, Geico is fighting Geico for his life over in. here. Just going 1v1 on Kaz. Yeah, he's going to win this. Is he going to win this? I don't know. Uh, is, he might win. The, he does win it. What, any Brock's barrier against Grams? And lands the Unbound Soul goes away! Oh no! This AD carry is absolutely 1v9ing right now. Anyway, like I was gonna say, uh, do you pick up Mountain Dragon? Guess what? It's a Mountain Soul. Guess what Shivana gets with Per Dragon? Magic resistant armor. And she's about to get a Mountain Soul. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck indeed here, especially to Grams. This Honestly, luck is the only way to survive this oh, one. Unless oh, you've got Jesus in a bottle. <laughs> oh, no way, but Ken falls. Boss saver to pick up the kill. The perfect guardian proc. And Jennifer's arrow. That one lands. You're telling me that one lands? As Geico's coming on forward, wants to get the mystic shots on. Off booster. You can't stop the autos, Jesus. Unfortunately, you can only block the mystic shots. And Geico, I believe, killed four people in that in the past two minutes. He killed four people. Yeah, I mean, I said at the very beginning of the game, Solancho, this is Geico's Ezreal. Honestly, does a great job here. But look at this Pyroclasm. Look at that brand passive. Just going across the entire team. It's all about the choke points. And Marcotte going down immediately. Havoc going to be able to get a kill at the beginning of the fight here. But watch Geico. Just going to Arcane Shift forward, looking for an opportunity here. Just... Picks up the cooldowns and Jesus in a bottle just steps forward a little bit too far. There we go. One more auto in. And here, the 1v1 against Kaz just dodges oh. out on that sun, flashes for it, doesn't necessarily need that, but just wants to make sure that there's no chance of dying here. Kaz also flashes the mystic shot, but with all uh, in the end, Geico gonna be able to calculate exactly how much damage he's taking, how much damage he needs in order to survive. And in the end, it is going to be the Ezreal coming out on top. Oster nearly gets 100 zeroed by Max. It goes in with the ultimate. Interesting, Jesus in the bottle responds with a Brawl ultimate there. And I don't feel like, maybe he thought there was kill potential, but, what? oh no. <laughs> oh, Mystic dude. shot okay. moment. So we saw an Ashland in Trent Crystal Arrow after Arrow after Arrow last night, and now we're starting to see True Shot Barrages <laughs> land and get kills after kills after kills. These cross the map ultimates, I don't know what it is, but they are people are on fire with them lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the meantime, here we go. Nostalgia gonna be driving that Herald all the way in towards double that charge. second tower. Wait, is he getting the is he gonna get the double charge? Wait, he is! He's gonna get the double charge! So he lose the myth! Tier 2 as well. Graham's Fate Seal is going to be able to knock up Nostalgia, so it's not going to be able to help him go up anywhere. And Geico's going to run straight back on in to the Rift Herald 2. They're going to be able to take an inhibitor turret here as well. I, they say that that's a feature, but I still believe it's a bug. <laughs> Honestly, beautiful stuff for the side of AWE. Playing incredibly around that Rift Herald, trying to make sure that they time their all-ins well and time them well they do here. Now, so much gold on Geico. As we saw earlier, there was a lot of focus from the jungle to try to make sure that this bot lane goes well, which usually when you have Ezreal, Leona, and a Renekton in your game, that's not the plan, right? So much of the plan usually gets spent towards making sure top lane has a lead. But man, Havoc's been doing such a good job on his own. Already sitting on two items while Ham still struggles to finish that ravenous hydra here in the meantime side lanes have been going exceedingly well for awe as their ezreal gets stronger and stronger yeah it's gonna be close to building up the third item power spike where's the ash is still get to finish second uh and this is kind of where the static shift build is starting to get a little bit of a hit in this patch uh because it's now 2900 gold so yeah, the 100 gold on an 80k can, can sometimes make a difference, right? Let's be real. It can sometimes make a difference when you, you typically first item build power spike because it's such an early lead. It gives you such an early spike to get into those next items. And with it costing a little bit more, 
it doesn't really fulfill that purpose as easily anymore. And you also don't get as much movement speed on it now, so the space gliding on Ash is going to be a little bit more difficult. Kaiko's going to be able to buffer out Kaiko. the stun up with the arcane shift. Solar Beam's going to be able to come down. Braum ultimate for a little bit of peels. TPing in. Look at Graham's coming over the wall with the unbound soul. Maybe trying to find a kill, but Havoc in the back line with the dominance in combination with Nostalgia's Flame Breath. They just find everything. And I think that might be game, Anti. I'm smelling like it might be game. TP4 just be able to keep a cannon wave minion alive. Or did he just TP onto a warden? instead of a minion uh <laughs> and, and i'm sorry but that's that's a, a little unfortunate there but they might be able to end this game 22 minutes in yeah they're gonna be tanking up the towers playing it very well only one minion needed in order to take both of the nexus towers and there it is awe spelling the end of game number one tpg in shambles as so much of that play comes down to honestly i'd say geico's azul did a large amount of damage did a huge job there but it's because of all of that pressure all of that time spent down there by nostalgia right i mean so much of that time and effort from this jungler bringing out the shivana which i don't think anyone had shivana on their radars for this patch Probably not. Uh, maybe not even the Ezreal, too, after getting the Mystic Shot nerfs as well. That didn't really even look like Ezreal was nerfed. So, mm -hmm. uh, Brand still comes out with the most damage in the game on his respective team. That's just what Brand does. Uh, it's it's just a heavy I mean, damage. You saw champion. those choke point fights. <laughs> yeah. When the Pyroclasms are able to come down, it can be absolutely devastating. But, I mean, if that fight in the river never happened, we could still be casting the game right now. But that Ezreal found four kills after the fight in the in into the jungle, mm -hmm. which also resulted in another dragon pickup for the Shyvana. And so, uh, huge props to Geico on the Ezreal this time, this game around. Definitely is the MVP. Led the team in damage, led the team in kills, and did exactly what an AD carry needed them to do. But... We're going to go ahead, start to a short break. I know that was a quick game, but we're going to have a quick break too and be ready to get into game number two. So don't go anywhere.
I see you looking at me, looking at you. Hold up, where you going? What you doing? Who you seeing? What you need? What you want? I said, without you by my side, my side, my side. Without you by my side. One time, one time, from side to side. Without you by my side, I can't go outside. Without you by my side.
Well, 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 welcome back. <laughs> we have a very fun and interesting series going on here. So our four are up 1-0, looking to take a clean 2-0 sweep. And without game number one, look, if they have any momentum, any draft plan and play style that they're looking to go into game number two, it's quite possible that they can take the full 2-0. But to true gaming, they need to find uh, Tempest Gaming. They need to find a way back they need to get the dub this is very very important because not only are they fighting for that number three spot if they can be art of war esports which i think mm -hmm. now it's not possible because even if it goes two to one uh art of war will have a better map record than them but they're fighting to keep the number four spot because dorado gaming alpha have the same exact map rep er, record as tempest gaming mm -hmm. if they pick up a dub tonight and if that dub is a 2-0, then even if that dub may be a 2-1 and tr tr uh, Tempest gets 2-0 tonight, then Dorado Gaming Alpha may find themselves in the playoffs. Yeah, it's neck and neck over here. These matches mean a lot. <laughs> oh, goodness. My lungs are already dying. Anyway, these matches mean a lot. And if you want to get the upper hand in these matches, what you need to make sure that you've got on your side is the draft wins. And there's no better way to get a draft win than with pro comps. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, we love pro comps, as you saw last time around. I think, actually, Art of War had a weaker because art of war was art of war red side last time they, they were, art of right? war was red side art of yeah. war did pro have comp. the weaker composition yes. according to pro comps yes but you know sometimes it, it, what it, reason why we have that is because of what pro comps does it takes the meta picks based off recent patch notes and what champions are in the, the higher win rate the higher play rate right now and how a composition works within each other it determines the strategies and how your team should be able to come out on top. So theoretically, Tempest Gaming had the better team composition, but were unable to pull it off, unlike Art of War Esports. So Pro Comps, it is completely free to install, super easy to install. You go and ins go to the website, download the client, and it will sort of act as a virtual coach for you. So if you are an amateur team or a solo queue player looking to level up your draft gaming, need some sort of virtual coach, if you do not have your own amateur team coach, aren't really unaware of the strengths and weaknesses of your characters, then you should definitely go and check out pro comps to help level up your draft game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, pro comps, phenomenal tool to have at your dis at your disposure. And in the end, it was AW. He was going to be able to take that with a two ban loss in game number one. Like that is an insane thought here right honestly tpg have to get their stuff together because if you're going to lose out on that game number one after your opponents lose out on two early bands what is the real way how to get back into the swing of things now i gotta say right awe forfeiting the brand on r4 to go for the shivana is an insane thought right it's not something that you see very often especially as shivana literally just got nerfed and on the other side tpg picked up the brand immediately going to be able to put themselves in a good position there now what i will say is that tpg with that brand we're not able to make things happen across the map before level six right you had two kills early on but it was in the bot lane, it was on to Marcot, you know, onto that support twice in a row, and both of those kills went to Jesus in a bottle. Yeah. Uh, uh you could say that the Braum getting the early kills is a little bit of a detriment, uh, but those kills were pretty well spanned out. Like it and there was more than enough time to find other engage angles, other mm -hmm. opportunities across the map to get these carries and hyper champs online, but they realistically, Tempest Gaming weren't able to find those angles on this brand, and the dragon stacking just got too much. Then we went to the team fighting, and it was just all Art of War Esports. So now, we got to talk about the big picture here. Draft number two. What do we take away 
uh, from Temp Tempest Gaming. What do we take away from Art of War Esports? Do we feel that the Shivana is worth a ban? Okay, say we ban the Shivana. That opens up champions in the mid lane that were banned out. Say the si the the Syndra I saw was banned away. The LeBlanc was banned away. Getting Grahams mm -hmm. on or getting Mags on one of those champions could be absolutely detrimental to their chances of winning game number two. So. How does a team that has two more bands ban the team that has two less bands come up with a band strategy to try and find an angle to beat this Art of War team? Yeah, honestly, right here, this is a case of Art of War going out of the standard playbook, not necessarily just playing to what's meta, which is honestly pretty uncharacteristic for Art of War. As I've said before, Sword Blue, their coach, really tends to pick a lot of very standard, very good compositions, which don't really leave too much to be played around with. But as we see here, this is the time to bring out these comfort picks, these comfort compositions, right? You got Geico's Ezreal. You've got Nostalgia on that Shivana. And... The team was able to make it happen, and a large part of that, I honestly think, has to do with Havoc just solo winning that top side, right? The Shivana usually wants to be going towards that bot lane, but you have to make sure that Renekton gets ahead there. So if Renekton can do it on his own, that is going to be feeling incredible. Yeah, I agree. This time around, I believe Tempest Gaming have elected for the red side. They want to have that sort of prio, that sort of prio in the counter pick angles. Maybe looking to get the pro the counter pick onto Ham into the top side. Maybe they're looking for it in the mid lane. Who knows? Art of War opting for the Talia and such Ani bans right out the gate, taking away two very very strong junglers within the meta. This Kendra's going to be responded with a ban on out. Lilia taking off the board here as well. Mm -hmm. So. Very, 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 very heavy jungle cryoed bands here. No ADCs, no nothing. Braum taken away. Okay, they okay. do not want to give over the Braum. That takes away a, a pick. Maybe they want to go for a Le uh, Maybe we have another Leona B1 angle. It's quite possible. I, I don't just I don't... like this. The Braum takeaway does mean that you have the opportunity to go for a Leona Misfortune which mm -hmm. is a phenomenal duo lane here. So I would love to see Ash. something like the Oh, we got an Ash. Again. Okay. <laughs> oh. So, Ash. Ash here is the takeaway from Boster because, you know, Boster plays a lot of Ash. You know, the highest mastery champion, I think, for Boster is the Ash. So, going to be doing that as a takeaway here. So, Yona, once again, going to be a takeaway on red side. Very, very strong support regardless of those nerfs. So, going to be doing fine. And okay, we got a full on comp steal from the side Braum, of TVG. Though. <laughs> You can't run Braum! <laughs> it's not gonna be a full run around. We're gonna have the Rel locked on in, okay? I'm not too fully against this. Uh, Brand is still open. Lock Brand, please. You, you, you win this game if you lock Brand, I feel. Um, I don't necessarily hate the idea of locking Brand. You could oh. lock Aurora. Okay. So, I was about to say, okay. Brand is a contestable pick here, but there's one crucial champion that we did not see in the bands for AWE. It is going to be Aurora. I'm guessing we're going to be seeing an immediate Renekton ban with that Camille on R3. But, man, that could be a spooky. We might even be seeing the Aurora top, which in that case, you know, the Renekton ban goes completely wide. But in the end is going to be more mid lane bans here for the side of AWE trying to make sure that the Aurora doesn't instantly get counterpicked because you can already see where that Camille is going to be going. Yeah, I don't think I'd be too... I don't think I'd be too against throwing this Aurora into the top side. I think with the, her W is going to be able to take a lot more even trades. Not going to get stunned up from the Camille who's slingshotting on in off the zip lines. So a Mumu band out as well, just taking away a, a strong jungle tank engage, which this Tempest Gaming team needs. And they're gonna go ahead and lock in the Maokai. Heavy AP damage, as well as one of the best ultimates in the game, and can be mm -hmm. that sort of tank frontline with this Leona. This is where this team has been lackluster so far. Camille is not really a frontline. It is a split pushing or 1v1 champion, but the Volibear coming Ooh. up. This could be Volibear top or jungle. I Wait. hope to God it's Volibear top. I 
I, think I it's good. love it's me top. some Volibear top. And Volibear. No, oh it's my, Zeri mid. It's, this is Zeri mid. Or, or no, top. that is Zeri top. No way. Zeri There's top no, is. Wait, it's not Zeri mid. Okay, there are quite a few very strong range champions right now, right? And when I say range champions, range champions in that top lane is where they are the strongest. And oh, yeah, the those bears. champions is Zeri, Kai'Sa, and Vayne. Those are the top three. Zeri, easily the best of those three. Kai'Sa is essentially like Vayne in terms of she can outduel some of those top laners. But in the end, she does have more wave clear than Vayne. Vayne kind of just cries anytime that she has to deal with two more waves. But all of this was for the last patch. We literally just got some changes that make some of these top lane champions not quite as strong. Here. What the Ooh. hell? I don't. I think that's. It's a. I think we have. A, there's no way that's. Okay. Serious. So. <laughs> but like. I will say right. I do like the Volibear pick a lot. Volibear is a classic counter pick to the skilled four in top lane. You you have the Fiora, you have the Irelia, you have the Riven, you have the Camille. All four of those champions will just get stat sicked by the Thunder Bear here in that top lane. In the meantime, I know I said that Sword Blue doesn't really like to draft crazy little things here, but I think Sword Blue really trusts Nostalgia. If the Zeri jungle is going to be what's picked up here, I honestly have no idea how this champion functions in the jungle. I think that her jungle clear itself is fine. And into a Maokai, you're likely not going to be seeing too much crazy invades here and there. I mean, I don't know. The only thing that I can think of is Zeri's Filipino. I mean, it just toss him into the rainforest that's exactly where we all know filipinos belong but uh i don't know i i got nothing <laughs> i don't know man uh if, i know we're not doing interviews until we get into playoffs and get to the grand finals and whatnot but like I'm, i need sword blue on interview like I nostalgia, say, like, nostalgia for one needs to be on interview but i need to know what the thought process is from I, coach I'm, here I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I want to know what he is cooking, man. Oh, baby. Here we go on the rift. And there it is. The Zeri jungle is going to be picking up that health potion. I mean, I doubt that Zeri would be able to clear without that one. But, you know, Boster now on the Ezreal, not going to be... A on that ash that he's so well known for in the meantime geico on the ash i will say not necessarily the hardest comfort pick for this player here the same way that the ezreal was so we're probably not going to be seeing the crazy outplays in the same way in the meantime havoc on the volley i don't dislike this at all you just get really really tanky honestly with the grasp you could also be going for the rod of ages navori flicker blade build but there's a lot of variability for this champion here it's likely going to be the heavy tank build in that top lane but man we don't see volley top very much i'm very very happy yeah, I, I actually really like Volley Bear as a champion. It's one of the first few that I ever played in League of Legends. Uh, and so I, I really like Volley Bear the champion. I think I've, I'm excited to see what Havoc can pull off going for those engages, going for those tower dives. And I'd like to see a little bit of a Pryo going for the Void Grubs too, especially when you have a champion like Volley Bear and Ash on your team. So you're going to be able to burn towers extremely fast. And you definitely don't want to give that over to Split Pushing Yone and or Camille on the opposite side of Tempest Gaming. So uh i this game is going to be interesting to say the least we're not leashing for the zeri jungle either so uh, obviously mm. she has to have enough damage to be able to clear i don't know if nostalgia has ever practiced this uh, i don't know if they've I, there's no it. shot that you're bringing out <laughs> a zeri jungle in playoff contention match when you've never practiced it like there is no way you're going to convince me that nostalgia is that much of a psychopath here but well, they have in the third meantime, seed lock, no matter what, if we're being frank. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be too... They could be fooling around a bit, you know? Yeah, I mean, could be, but 
in the meantime havoc and ham just going toe to toe here very strong trades back and forth no level three on the volley just yet i mean immediately turn into a liar as i say that but no chomp means that it's not going to be a super hard winning trade and an extra tower shot is also going to be rough for the volley in the meantime mags making use of this aurora i'm not a hundred percent certain if you know, may, did I read the patch wrong? Did the patch is the patch coming later? Like, no, we're in the patch. No, we are in. The client does say fourteen fifteen. Okay, Aurora yeah. is nerfed. So, I don't know what AWE has been cooking throughout this series. They pick up the Aurora after the nerfs. They pick up the Shivana after the nerfs. They pick the Zeri jungle, and. Not only do they pick it, they're looking to make Marquette a play with it. Goes in with the dismount. Coming over the wall, the stars are going to get flushed. <laughs> I mean, oh honestly, I don't know Lord. what I was expecting. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Kaz in the right place at the right time. Going to be able to get a great counter gank off. And there's no flash on this Zeri. Zeri's one of the few champions I'd say can technically get away with not taking flash. But you can't E directly into Leona if you don't have a flash available. In the meantime, Marcotte and Geico just looking for the trades back and forth into Boster, who now has the double buffs. It's just looking so rough for this bot lane. Yeah, Marquette wants to find angles. It's going to have to try and match up the roam timers that Jesus in the bottle is going to end up having on this Leona. Rel is a decent roam for roam champion against Leona. Uh, can still get the dismount. Has not as much CC potential as Leona, but is able to, to give her own and be able to at least fight back in terms of CC. So I'd like to see this Rel roam. And I, I think we're going to have to see this Rel roam with a Zeri jungle. Two objectives like the Void Grubs, the Sixonia Blades can be coming up with the in the Ball. That one's going to end up going wide. Scatter is going to be able to proc up that bone plating, but they don't really have the damage to push on forward. I don't want to fight Boster with a double win, double blue, uh, double boss on top. So uh, they're going to wait for those to go ahead and burn on out. Meanwhile, Neutral Objective is going to be spawning up. The first dragon has been co come online, and the Void Grubs are going to be spawning up here shortly. Kaz is taking a recall. Maybe looking to prio the first dragon while Nostalgia has already roamed straight on down here. But the problem is, I don't think that the Zeri can solo the dragon this early on. Needs that bot side prio, needs that mid side prio to be able to at least have somebody come in and help them. Whereas Kaz on this AP jungler with that Faded Ashes could easily solo the first dragon. But with the prio that both and Jesus in the bottle have, they can definitely make it all up in time for this objective. Oh, absolutely. And in the meantime, it's just going to be the classic farm it out. Nothing too much happening in this early game here. Now, I got to say, I'm not the most familiar with how the Aurora works out when it comes to the Yone lane. Uh, but as I've said before, the one thing that this champion really excels at is survivability. It's so difficult to really just take down the aurora and right now they are going to get spotted out on this dragon but there's little that awe can do in response here no prio from the mid lane and now they're looking for a fight oh marquette is starting to lead up the charge this mounts get or uh, remounts gonna be back online Flash oh. forward out of the Aurora. Max goes in with the ultimate. Maybe trying to find on the bowstrip, but it's chunked out about half HP. Nostalgia is going to be able to come over with the super metric. Let's your beam. Geico's going to slay up Jesus in a bottle. It goes two for one, though. And Graham's is trying to run down. Geico Max does not have nearly enough HP to be able to help on out. Going to provide their best with the Q poke. Nostalgia should be able to smite up this dragon. So it's about, I think it's about two for two. On Has the sides. ulti. No. Max still here. Nostalgia coming over the wall with the beam. Ultimate on the Zeri. Finds Graham. So it's a three for two trade off. And you get the dragon totally in favor of AWE. Yeah, incredible stuff from AWE there. Honestly, part of it might come to luck. But if you're doing this two games in a row, I'd say that's all skill. As Nostalgia going to be able to pick up two kills on the Zeri. Going to start to get that ball rolling. Being able to pick up that dragon as well. And it's exactly what I was just saying, Cilantro. The one thing that Aurora always has is it's so hard to kill this champion. Right? The... Ultimate did so much work in making sure that TPG's bot lane was out of position and immediately after that 
just barely getting out on the tiniest slivers of health. No matter how much Graham pushes forward, it just seems very, very difficult for the Aurora to actually go down. Well, we're starting, but now they're going to know that the Void Grubs were taken away. Graham's able to just help Kaz get on out. Maybe Max wants to come over the wall, find thing going to Graham and Kaz, but no. He's going to opt not to. Speaking of things that are really hard to kill, Pam has not found a kill angle onto this Volley Bear just yet. Why? Because he just tanks it on up, gets a shield proc off of the off of the storm coming, uh, the lightning strike coming down, and then just uses his W on the wave to go home and heal up. As the Magna Storm straight onto Buster, they're able to find the auto attacks. And Geico eating up the Ignite from Jesus of the Vault, doing their best, but does not have the level 6 advantage. Marquette. With the support differential there in the bot side, engaging straight off of hitting level 6 with the Magnet Storm. Yeah, last game, it was Marquette's turn to die a bunch in the early game. And this time, it is Boster going down for the second kill here. Oh. Max going to be able to take up a kill on Grams. I'm not 100% certain as game. to how we got that one going. But in the meantime, Aurora just going to be doing so, so much work in this mid lane. Here we have the replay in, in the corner, I believe, here. Uh, what actually ended up happening. Uh, I think Grams maybe goes in with a Q3 and disrespects that the Zeri was lingering around. I'm assuming is what's going to end up happening. Uh, Aurora ult comes down and Nostalgia comes over the wall. It was essentially a solo bolo, but Nostalgia was there for the cleanup, mm -hmm. just in case he needed to be. Moral support, moral support. True. Mm -hmm. But in the end here, it is going to be mags getting a uh, another lead in the mid lane off five of dark seal stacks. yeah <laughs> five dark seal stacks this is going to be so so good for that aurora last time it was the vex was able to turn that into a huge amount of team fighting here but oh my god another engage on the jesus in the bottle he's gonna get buffered out for the cleanse geico is able to fight on back to shop rosh i'm able to find out much of the arcade shifts and the autos swinging left right and center but then chatter crystal arrow because we able to find boaster and nostalgia cleans up the kill nature's grab's gonna get flashed on out as marquette's looking as kaz goes in with the w proc nostalgia's able to proc up the ultimate too marquette taking out the brunt force up the damage he's gonna carries trying to desperately to fight back the magnus back online and Kaz is forced to flush it out. The Fate Seal is going to be able to come down and maybe able to find Geico. But the Unbound Sold, it's still on cooldown, but he gets to shut down anyway on this Yoan potential to be able to find at least two more kills. It's going to be a great remount to get the knockup and stun the Soldier. Viring Autos left, right, and center. And it goes two for one in the bot side. I think Nostalgia picking up both of those kills as well as Havoc goes straight forward onto him. Now, I'm not going to be expecting either all outs here. This Volley Bear is kind of just the stay alive champ against this Camille. And in the end, Galing the Filipino Iwaga Iwai, five kills on the <laughs> Zeri. I cannot believe this. Zeri Jungle is doing so much work in this game, so much damage, out farming the enemy jungler on that Maokai, out damaging, out rotating, out performing, and Nostalgia bringing us a new pick each and every time, but all of them are going to be classics with how well this man has been playing. In the meantime, top lane still has that Camille under control here. I do believe it's going to be the Rod of Ages build coming in for Havoc here. Not quite finished yet, but looking to get a plate or two. Might even go for the full dive. Yep, Havoc procs the tower despawn you get the ultimate they're gonna negate the tower damage coming down they're gonna share a little bit of plate gold but it's gonna be nostalgia getting up another kill too boy bear building towards that rod of ages ap tank champion that we all know and love the big old teddy bear in the top side and great timing there to be able to punish out him ham's gonna have tp so we'll be back in the nick of time. Going to probably negate the second plating coming now. Marquette is wanting to take the front force of the nature's grass. Geico's going to be able to dodge off that solar beam. Kaz going under the tower though onto Geico. The arrows, the stuns. It might be enough to at least go one for one. It is so far. Maybe oh. even more than that. Geico with the space gliding on this ash. They're able to find it just in the bottle. Maybe trying to get on out. Maybe go for a trade off onto Geico, but they're not able to find it. This Leona, your damage has been nerfed, unfortunately. Here and here comes nostalgia too. Geico and Marquette survive the 3v1 tower dive can you spell bot diff cilantro because dear lord awe's bot lane is playing absolutely insane this game i mean tpg started off the game with a first blood right immediately nostalgia just donated that one straight on over to boster but it doesn't matter 
right? It doesn't matter if you get that first blood. What matters is the rest of the laning phase. And Marcotte and Geico have done so, so well at bringing this back. They've gotten a huge lead going this time around. And now that is no longer a Shivana. It's no longer super constrained to going for those dragons. The Void Grubs are going to get traded over and it's not going to be the sixth Void Grub game for TPG. Uh, no, it will not, but they're going to be able to pick up at least the dragon. So they trade off the objective at minimum. The mountain dragon will help you a little bit more tankier as Graham is going to get solo bullet here. Just dodge comes on over the wall with his electro beam. Fate seal comes on out, but it's only going to get the knock up. There's Marquette's coming over the wall with the dismount. This dodger is going to proc up the Zeri ultimate just to be able to clear help clear out this wave because Justin the ball was just able to get out in the nick of time, but we got a Rift Herald spawning up here soon, shortly. Nostalgia has the topside prio, has mid lane prio. This turret maybe actually end up falling here soon. It's quite possible they can go ahead and clear. Just in the ball are going to try it. Oh! The Bulbo into the bot side. Looks like Intended Crystal Arrow wasn't even used. So those were all auto attacks out of Geico. Finding the kills there. I mean, he has Bork on Ash, so uh, obviously mm -hmm. he's, he's going to be able to win that one out. As we have another tower dive coming down. Havoc is a little bit late in proc in the ultimate. He's going to go for it. Now it's the Hexite Ultimatum. going to be able to come straight on down. Perfect time to ultimate there from this Lully Bear. And it's just all over awe is just all over the map right now just mm -hmm. awe just winning all across the map bot lane mid lane top lane every single one of these lanes doing incredible and the best part of it every single one of these lanes scales geico now getting chased down here barely going to get tagged by that zenith blade and this might be a dead ash but grams just Barely going to be able to pick it up. Gets that shutdown. And Yone, with four kills to his name, is the only win condition available for TPG right now. Does it matter, though, when Max just ults him? If we go into, like, some sort of team fight, Max just ults him, and he can't really, like, get the kind of, like, full value of Yone. You know, when you see Yone, he, like, goes super far out, chases down the back line, gets into the back line. He gets those fate seals off. Then he's just going to have, like... Uh, 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 what's the I don't I was I, that sucks. Uh, he's gonna have a small oh. di diameter of a circle to fight within on Yon, and that's not realistically what Yon wants to do. So I feel like this Aurora champion is a perfect counter. Nostalgia, Yon, Nostalgia potentially caught out here. Ignite's gonna be pricking down. Two shot Raj comes on in. The Aurora ulti comes down too, and Max is pumping in damage, but does go two for one. And in the meantime, Buster coming over the wall with the Arcane Shift too, as well. So they find an angle at minimum in the top side tempest gaming so it's not over for them yet but they do lose out a mid tier two and a bot a mid tier one and a bot tier one for those kills in the top side so the trade-offs for awe were at least there yeah i mean it's working out much much nicer for tpg though you know gonna be able to pick up those crucial shutdowns gonna be able to pick up that gold here and one thing I also got to note, right, with this Navori Flicker Blade build on the Vala Bear, Havoc is constrained to a side lane. The man's not here to team fight. The man is here to make sure that Camille doesn't get a chance to play the game. Zero and three on that Camille just now finished that Triforce, but there is no chance you're going to be able to out DPS the Vala Bear once he finishes those Flicker Blades, right? So once you can lock that Camille into that side lane, that's when you can take away pieces of Exodia, right? TPG have an Exodia composition. They have a Death Ball composition where if you have all five members together, it's very, very terrifying. You have the Hextech Ultimatum to start things off for a pick onto one player. You have the Yone Ultimate. You have the Nature's Grasp from the Maokai as well the solar flare you know just so much aoe lockdown but all of it starts with having one player locked down here just as mags is getting locked down here yeah a little bit unfortunate for the bunny in the top side uh ends up getting caught on out nature's grass is able to find the roots off but we got about a minute before the next dragon and kaz is towards this top side nostalgia working with marquette working with havoc they're starting to gain, or, or, or not, not Havoc, uh, Geico. They're starting to gain this sort of river prio, this river positioning. And Terkus is going to be coming out. Oh. He's not going to be able to find Kaz or Graham's. But I'm, Havoc, I'm sure, is aware that something fishy is in the mm -hmm. top side. So he's not going to go ahead and walk forward. And instead, he's going to wait for the wave to come to them. But right now, Kaz has to take a recall. The position, mid side pro oh. oh. Oh, that's why he was standing still. It worked out for him, <laughs> but that's why he was standing still.
the most well-timed pause on the planet for Havoc. Uh, but either way, right? So as we said, right? So Volibear is going to be constrained to a side lane. Camille is going to have to be the one to deal with him. And it's likely not going to work out well in a solo 1v1. So maybe you take the Yone and you have the Yone dealing with that Volibear. But... You know, if the Volibear does get on top of you with that Navori Flicker Blaze, it's going to be very, very difficult to find ways how to deal with it. In the meantime, Mags did spend an extra 1,400 gold to pick up that Magi's. Now, whether or not Aurora is going to be able to make the full use of that Magi's when you've died twice after picking up those early kills is another question entirely. But the number one thing to watch out for with Aurora is... That ultimate does so much work in these team fights, right? Aurora, as a champion, wants to start off these team fights with the ulti. It traps so many people there. It's kind of like a pseudo Jarvan ultimate, except you can't find a way out. You know, relatively similar to the Hextech ultimatum in its own way. But at the very least, you can blink out of it, right? You can flash out, but... Aurora having that team wide lockdown is super super important for these later team fights. Yeah, um, and I I feel like you know I've watched a little bit of this champion or Paul Walter talk about the champion Nemesis talk about this champion in the mid lane, and what they've kind of come to the conclusion of is it's it's a champion to counter melee champs, mm -hmm. essentially. And so when on the opposite side you've got Leona, you've got Yone, you've got Maokai. So going into a team fight. Those three are most 10, 10 times out of 10 going to get locked up in that Aurora Ultimate. And they're confined to fighting within a small space. And that would just allow for the carries like Geico and Nostalgia to just go to town, heading them without having to worry about these champions getting on into this backline, getting on into these carries. And that's realistically where this award is going to shine. I mean, we have a two-item Zeri on the board, as well as a two-item Bully Bear. So, I, I, I'm going to be, y'all, I'm going to be expecting these team fights to start getting pushed and proud for AWE. We got 30 seconds till the next drag. So, I'd like to see the a full 5v5 here break out because they have this item advantage. They have these leads. They need to start pressing it because if not, I mean... Sure, their their team is kind of hyper scaling, but it's Malkai's starting to get up there in terms of damage after finishing that Leandries, and Pam's going to be split pushing on the Camille, so you don't you don't really want to have to re respond to that. You want to push these five v fives while you have an advantage to get these objectives, and while you don't yeah. have to worry about a Camille who's at her tier one essentially still. Yeah, but here we go. Death Ball composition for AWE now, looking for their in here, and I gotta say, right. The biggest issue with having this double AD carry composition is they don't really have a big frontliner. Volibear, if he had gone super tanky, would have that possibility. But, you know, this is very much a side lane focused Volibear. Just going to go with the Vimori Flicker Blades, just going to be picking up tank from here on out here. But it's not going to be available for team fights until a decent bit later. So, now, as we get later and later into this game, the question is, how do you stop the Camille? How do you stop the Yone? How do you stop the Maokai from getting on top of these squishy AD carries? In the meantime, Havoc right now needs to find a way how to stop them from getting onto himself. I think he's just going to commit and take the fight. It's realistically the best option that they can do, and I completely respect it. It forces out the Fate Sealed at minimum. Nostalgia comes in. Can he clean this um, up on the Zeri? Feeling plus TP. It's going to be Max coming in with the Aurora Ultimate too, and it misses! He missed the Aurora Ultimate, unfortunately. And it all falls apart for AWE, but at least they forced out a ton of ultimates on the side of TPG. Yeah, in the meantime, Geico going to be picking up another tower in that mid lane. I do believe that they can pick this one up and oh, it's slink gone, yeah. on out of here. Yeah, there we go. So Ash and the Rel, the last two members of AWE left on that map here. Not really going to be the largest damage deterrent, but definitely still going to be able to keep the pressure up on the map. Baron now going to spawn, and this is a possibility for TPG if they do so desire, but 
Got to be very, very careful into a team that you cannot deny the vision from. That is true. Hawk shots are going to be phenomenal coming on out with this Ash. Is one of the prio reasons why you pick a champion like this. Meanwhile, things are starting to kind of even out. We had close to an 8k gold lead in the side of AWE, but they found some split lane fights. They found some picks. And so far now, we're down to about 4k. And if they can continue to fight like this, TPG, they may be finding themselves back into this game and pushing for an advantage. Riptown gets dropped and runs to the mid lane. I'm assuming it was just all about to run out. And so, unfortunately, ends up mm. getting spawned. But now, the series picked up IE. So that's a big, big, big power spike. Nobody else on the map has three items. This Zeri needs to push this advantage. They need to try and take these 5v5 fights, if at all possible. Let Havoc, let Marquette tank the front end of the Nietzsche's Grass coming out of Kaz. And then you prop Zeri ult and just go to town with the Mags, Aurora ulti, straight on down. And just get that penetration through everybody and pumping damage on the Zeri while you have this advantage. I'd like to see AWE push that because it's TPG yeah. finding these angles back in in Nostalgia and AWE, they really need to shut that down. Yeah, I mean, in the meantime, Havoc is just going to continue to push that side lane. As I said before, you know, the Volibear, his only real job is to lock someone towards that side lane. And this time, it's going to be Graham, the only one able to really deal with this bear over here. Meanwhile, Ham in the top lane, still trying to farm up to a relevant point on the Camille, still not having a single kill available. Meanwhile, nine kills on that Yone. Do, going to be dragged into that side lane. Super, super good stuff from Havoc. But right now, as the game moves on, as the uh, Rod of Ages finally procs, the biggest question is how long can the Volibear keep the Yone on the side? Yeah, he's got TP. Havoc has TP, so they could go TP for TP. They're all lingering around the ward, and none of them know it. It's kind of funny. But the dragon is, or the Baron, it's essentially a big purple mutated dragon. Um, Baron's going to go ahead and be started up. They take this moderately fast with double AD carry, but the rest of the squad are going to be there. TP's coming down. It's going to be Havoc coming on in here. Nature's Grass pops up. Solar Beam comes out out of Jesus, and Havoc's already fallen. Marquette's close to falling next to, but there's the Zeri ultimate. Spawn with Aurora ultimate. Cast gets caught out. Nostalgia finds one. Can he find more than one, though? It's the Fate Seal going to get the double knockup, and Grams is turning the fight back around in the Geico? favor of TPG. Look at Geico in the fight, though. Maybe he wants to be able to find Ham, but unfortunately cannot. Has to flash on over the wall, and the Passive out of hand is just going to be able to help him clean up this kill. And is this Yon enough to carry this TPG team? It's starting to feel like it. Yeah, it's definitely starting to feel like it. Havoc going to get instantly popped at the beginning of that fight. And Mag's ultimate just barely catching the Kaz there right at the tip. But right now, Aurora in position to just start shoving out this wave once again. AW still do have the gold lead, but it's not feeling like it because you don't have a real frontliner to really make things happen. So right now, Havoc TPs right into that back line, immediately loses more than half of his health, does get the ult off, does get the shield off, but that's so little value from this Volibear where you have so much of your gold lead spent. In the meantime, Kaz going to get dragged in by the Aurora ultimate. And once again, Nostalgia getting tagged up for walking up slightly too far. Geico, on the other hand, going to prove himself the better AD carry, but once again, going to get popped by the melee champions. Doesn't matter how much your positioning works out as a ranged champion if you're getting dashed on directly by a Camille. Yeah, and while we were watching the replay there, the dragon was picked up for AWE, so they're close to Soul Point. Great stun there out of Havoc. The Hexic Ultimate coming on a Nostalgia, but he's going to be able to help find the kill off the top. The help of the top laner anyway. And But the, that Soul is going to help push this gold lead. But honestly, the gold lead doesn't matter if you're not winning the team fights. And Grahams yep. is doing so much in these team fights to keep this team alive and keep this team kicking. But when we get closer and closer to this Soul, and with this mid lane prior that Geico is establishing left, right, and center, I don't know how much more is going to be in the tank of this salt this, this solo laner. Because you're gonna be fighting eventually against the Baron and a Soul if AWA are able to pick up both. It's just gonna get even more difficult of a hill to climb. 
Yeah, and right now, I will say, Havoc getting closer and closer to picking up that Frozen Heart is super, super important of a spike. Man needs to be as tanky as possible, and once you get into the later stages of the game here, so many of these champions, like the Camille, like the Yone, like the Ezreal, have ways how to just shred straight through you. So now with that Frozen Heart, maybe AW can have some semblance of a frontliner, but until you get a really tanky frontliner, it's going to be very difficult to get these fights off exactly how you want them. I have to agree. Uh, I don't want to see another... Oops, sorry. I don't want to see another Baron flip coming out because that one was pretty egregious. Uh, oh. Let's see, maybe find an angle with the attack of Crystal Arrow straight on like, the cast. Takes it over the wall, but the Magnus Storm is going to be able to pull two into the Aurora Ultimate. And as you can see, Booster gets the Arcane Shift on out, but it's slowed up anyway. Max with the Q Prox is going to be forced to kill Gold in his hands, looking for that engage. The dismount and a ham is going to knock him back into the team, and it's all just able to clean up the kill. Goes forward with the Electro Beam, but is unable to find Buster. He's able to Arcane Shift on out of it. And there, we now have the Baron Angle re-established. A gold lead re-established for AWE as well. they finally winning out a team fight. While well, you can say it's a team fight, they realistically found a pick, which then turned into a team fight. But, so, but it was already at a disadvantage for TPG. But now this Baron lead is going to help extend this gold lead. And soon, they're going to be able to just slap TPG with their wallets. Yeah. Almost 10,000 gold in the lead now. And not only that, Volibear being in the area means that AWE can start to really push forward with all of that damage, with all of that gold there. And all of that started off with one pick, right? One opportunity onto the Kaz here. Let's watch this once again here. Geico with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow just barely in the right place at the right time just tags the cast how in the world did that miss out on jesus in a bottle is a is beyond me but the magnet storm the aurora ultimate just doing so much work to lock down both the support and the jungler from tpg here in the meantime aurora does what aurora does best and that is just absolutely refuse to die in every possible scenario here in the meantime mags just going to be in a good position but it has absolutely not not again not again the w is just to save him for a little bit of time but it's not going to nearly be enough jesus and the bottle's going on forward Geico with the arrows though is firing back rams comes in with the fate the seal nostalgia is find the kill nostalgia with this aerial is going to try and fight back those havoc is coming in it's, it's a oh. huge electro beam into the volley barrel to me that i believe that the magnet storm was able to come out in the nick of time mags versus boster looking to go forward with the w oh the barrier comes on out though he's scared but i believe that with both of these players staying alive it's probably going to be favored for awe because that they have this baron buff sure you killed off a lot of members so they lost a lot of the baron buff after just getting it but even with max having this baron should be able to take this inhibitor turret so they get four kills and they get an inhibitor turret and they maintain baron on at least one member so it's still a little worthwhile mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, going four for four in a crazy close fight is not exactly where you want to be standing as AWE, right? Especially when you were 8,000 gold ahead at the beginning of that fight, but at the very least going to be able to pick up that inhib tower. Nostalgia, please cool the jets a little bit. The Zeri keeps on going towards that back line and gets closer and closer to death each and every time here. In the meantime, Geico just going to clear out this mid wave as the dragon soul is on the table here. And I got to say, Another this arrow. is a great soul here. Cash again. Nabs Cash. Oh my, the Nature's Grass is going to be able to come down. Havoc maybe caught out. Sixonia Blade is going to be coming in, but the Electro Beam comes over the wall. Nostalgia trying to be able to bounce back. Graham goes over the Q3. Unbound will be able to come down, but it's a huge Aurora Ultimate. Max able to find one. Jesus in a bottle is traded out. Has to be able to go golden without the middle of the fight. Looking to re-engage onto him as Cass is forced to flash on over the wall. Ham ends up falling to Marquette, and they're continuing to lead the cavalry charge onto this tree, onto the Maokai. And Grams is there just for a little bit of the build. The dismount's going to be able to find that knock-up Mags just trying to survive for as long as physically Our possible alone. on this Aurora champion. q 3 is going to be able to help find that. And Nostalgia comes in to be able to clean up the kill. So it's one for one within the bot size. Nostalgia's going to be able to dash on over the
of the wall with the Electro Beam coming down. Not able to find Grams just yet. But Geico and Gra it's just a 280 carries and a mags versus a Yone. Fate Shield goes completely wide. Not able to find anything off of it. Electro Beam onto the Unbound Soul. is going to be able to proc up the GA. Max comes on in. Flashes the Ramus Ultimate 2. And they clean Ace. And they still are able to move on to take Soul. Yeah, and in the end, Nostalgia stays alive and is able to output tons of damage throughout that fight. And Geico, with some great positioning, going to continue to fire off the autos. And just like that, the double marksman dream comes alive. It is AWE going to be able to pick up a win on that fight. Another Enchanted Crystal Arrow onto Kaz to start things off, but Havoc immediately picked off in the response there. The Nature's Grass did so much work, but in the meantime, watch Nostalgia's positioning here. Just barely getting away from Grams as Geico able to constantly auto into that Aurora Ultimate. Beautiful flank from Mags. Beautiful timing on the Zhonyas as well. And so much value coming in from the Aurora. As Buster's going to get chased down by the double Marksman. As in the end, Marcotte a little bit too big for his britches there. But still going to be able to keep the squad of TPG around slightly longer than they had wanted to. All right, bot tier two, one of the last remaining few is top tier two is still alive. It is going to end up falling here. They're going to move around like pawns, like chess pieces. They want to stick together like glue, this AWE team, because they've got the soul. They have these advantages, and honestly, they have a Zeri too. And they might have found a pick on it just in the bottle, who goes a little bit too aggressive in the jungle over the wall. I think maybe, I, I honestly don't even know what he was thinking. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those moments where you have to get into the jungle to get some vision, but, you know, stepping a little bit too far forward, Jesus in a bottle going to be going down there, and now a 4v5 oh. against a full build Zeri is not oh, where you want to no, be. Ultimate. Beautiful ultimate. The Aurora ultimate cancers out all of the melee champions, and when Nostalgia coming down too, they get the double kill, all of the members of Fallen, he gets a triple kill. Nostalgia ends up dying out to the top, the fountain damage but just solidify that there's no chance that T tpg can stall this one out and it will be awe in a clean 2-0 sweep against tpg with some very very interesting meals being cooked in the kitchen here we were doubting it a little bit at first but oh boy did it put on a clinic yeah and in the end nostalgia with the most damage in the game the full build jungle zeri is not something i expected to be saying <laughs> for a playoff contention match here for awe the quick 2-0 quote unquote quick it was back and forth it was so so terrifying so much of a gold lead from awe but it still felt like it was on a knife's edge the entire time but in the end it is awe who are going to be picking up the victory here and that's going to do it for our Immortal League broadcast for today. But thanks so much for everyone for tuning in. Thanks so much to ProComps for once again sponsoring the stream. And make sure to catch the rest of the Titan Esports broadcast throughout the week. So y'all take care. Joe.